Hey YouTubers, it's Charlie, and we got a whole lot of Arrow stuff to talk about. We got a brand new trailer introducing us to the Ra's al Ghul of this universe, as well as a new character announced. They just announced that Ted Grant Wildcat is coming on the show. This video is mostly just going to be about the trailer, so I'm going to do a separate video for Wildcat later this week. Don't worry, I'm also doing the Batman vs Superman trailer this week too. But hello new people, if you're just finding me for the first time or you found me during all the Comic Con stuff, I do Arrow and Flash videos every week. Be sure to subscribe to get everything. I'll also be announcing my giveaway winner at the end of this video. So let's just rip apart the trailer frame for frame. Right off the bat, you see the brand new Motion logo that Warner Brothers rolled out for Arrow. They basically made a red Flash one for that show and a rainy depressing one for Gotham. It's like they uploaded custom banners for all the new DC TV shows. I didn't see a Constantine one, but they might just not have revealed that yet, or it might be a weird NBC network thing. The opening voiceover, wherever Oliver's looking out over the city, is a line that Huntress had during season two. I actually almost thought it was Thea, which would actually be pretty cool, but really this first half of the trailer is just a recap of season two. So everything is taken from those episodes. That line, once you let the darkness in, is from that Birds of Prey episode, whenever they put Huntress in jail. We see a bunch of WTF action scenes and the progression of Deathstroke's plan to crush Oliver into darkness by killing Moira and everyone else and everything he loves. This is the first promo this season, so essentially they have to just teach all the new people who are finding Arrow for the first time what happened. If you did watch season 2, then you know Oliver was galvanized into a hero, so whenever season 3 starts off, he's like full-on hero persona. And here's where we all cheered, because this is where the new footage is. The opening line is from a new character, Maseo Yamashiro. He's played by Carl Yoon. He's going to be Oliver's Diggle in the Hong Kong flashbacks. Like the Diggle before there was a Diggle. His wife is Katana. It's possible that in the flashbacks she won't be calling herself Katana, because in the comics, she didn't take that name until her husband was murdered. We'll just have to wait and see how closely Arrow's going to stick to the comics for some of those characters. What he's talking about when he says a man can't live by two names is obviously the superhero persona and the real life alter ego persona. In the flashbacks, Oliver still has not become the Arrow. Like he's not the vigilante even. Is he Oliver Queen Billionaire or is he going to try and be a force for good? The context in the show with which this line was said is a little bit weird because in the Hong Kong flashbacks, Maseo and Katana are Oliver's handlers. They work for Waller and Argus. Oliver's kind of forced to work for Waller, but we'll see that in a little bit later in the trailer. Together, the three of them are just going to try and make the best of a bad situation and learn how to serve justice while still being under the thumb of Argus. It's Oliver learning to be the better man, despite Amanda Waller trying to turn him into a killer. So then we see Oliver back at Queen Industries, which is kind of weird because most of last season was spent outside of the boardroom. I guess you could say it's what's left of Queen Industries after Slade and Isabel's influence have been purged. I'm not sure if she ran into the ground or if she just pushed Oliver out, but I'll explain more about that in a sec when we see Brandon Routh's character. The blue looking scene is connected to the new medium bad, Werner Zertel, also called Count Vertigo, played by Peter Stormare. It's probably his lab where he manufactures the Vertigo drug. So this next scene with Oliver and Laurel is a bit of a misdirect. It's actually connected to a couple other scenes. When she says that she and Oliver are business partners, she basically helps Oliver get the funds to buy back Queen Industries. Remember, he doesn't have any money. Thus, she becomes his new business partner. But wait, in this next scene, Ray Palmer, known as the Atom, swoops in or shrinks in, I guess I should say. Brandon Routh is essentially coming in the show as an investor in Oliver's company. Like, that's his entrance into the story. That makes him Oliver's new boss, so cue the funny music. It's going to be really awkward at first. It's not a bad thing, and Stephen Amell even said during Comic-Con interviews that he doesn't view Ray Palmer in a negative light. He is another future Justice League member who eventually is going to join Team Arrow, at least later this season. It's just that when they first meet, it's a little bit weird. Plus, he's also going to be competing with Oliver for Felicity's affections. I know a lot of you Elicity shippers are going to grind your teeth, but Brandon Routh is a totally cool dude, so this is actually going to be fun. Just roll with it. Trust me, everything will be put right by the end of the season, no matter how badly the ship is shaken up. Ray Palmer's business relationship with Oliver will, of course, over time turn into a nighttime vigilante relationship. That's one of the major arcs of the season, the evolution of Ray Palmer into the Atom. So here's where we get into what I'm going to think of as like a modified Connor Hawk storyline that they're basically giving to Diggle. It's Oliver explaining to Diggle that because he's got mini Diggle, he can't keep putting himself in danger. Diggle and Lila's baby will be another big arc for David Ramsey. Diggle balancing fatherhood with nighttime activities. I know everyone wanted to see a real Connor Hawk arc with Oliver, especially after his son was teased during season two, but it seems like they're basically giving that to Diggle's character. Not that Diggle's son's going to grow up to be a member of Team Arrow, it's just that they're doing the superhero slash father storyline for his character. 
Then here's the first look at Peter Stormare's Count Vertigo. I don't know if he's going to call himself that or if it's just going to be an affectation that other people attach to him because of all the vertigo he sells. His real name is Werner Zertel. I think that when he's talking to Oliver in that voiceover about refusing to die, he's referring to the big attack that comes during season one during the Elicity date, as well as all the stuff during season two. I feel like Zertel was actually kind of sitting on the fringe watching all the Slade stuff go on and just waiting for a moment to swoop in. I'm interested to see if Count Vertigo has any history with Starling City or with Oliver specifically. Like he might end up tying into the Hong Kong flashbacks too, but it's not confirmed. Then we finally see Katie Lotz in her black leather kicking butt again. They announced she was coming back, so it's not a huge surprise, but it's kind of hard to tell whose ass she's kicking. It might just be a random person and she might be helping out. There are a couple scenes later in the trailer that connect to this. The way they edited it is a little confusing. The hoodie person is not the person she just took down. Her next scene with her talking to Oliver is actually directly from last season, the one where she took off the episode where she took off to go back to Nanda Parbat. It's basically teeing up the Elicity arc that's going to be a big deal this year. And when I say Elicity, I'm just talking about the show dealing with their sexual tension in a more literal context. Like they're going to work through it episode by episode. Cut to said proposal and said Elicity date. Stephen Amell was actually asked about this at Comic-Con, surprise, surprise how their date went. He basically laughed and just said horribly. You'll see why in a sec, but their conversation, it's all about Oliver explaining his time in Hong Kong. I'm always amazed by the number of things that Oliver has not revealed to his other Team Arrow partners yet. Cut to, of course, Hong Kong parkour. I believe this person is Carl Yoon again. It's probably when he and Oliver first meet. He's not just his handler and his friend. He's also going to continue to train Oliver with Katana, but it doesn't look like it starts out as a very happy relationship. Like Waller tells Maceo, Carl Yoon, this character, to keep Oliver from escaping, from running away. The next scene with Waller explains that a little bit better. Oliver's trying to escape Hong Kong and get back to the mainland, and Waller's trying to keep him there to serve her purpose, whatever that is. I love how there's green cloth in the background. Foreshadowing much? Then this is just another scene of Oliver trying to escape, that parkour fight with Maceo. Then we cut back to present, and we see Oliver with Katie Lotz on that rooftop, the same one where she was kicking that guy's butt but it's also the big reveal of Colton in his Red Arrow costume. For everyone wondering which version of Roy he is in the comics, he's the Arsenal version. Stephen Amell joked that he now has the second best costume on the show just because Colton's looks so cool. And he's right, Roy's costume is way better than Oliver's. Then we finally catch up with Quentin. I know everyone had a bunch of questions about him after the finale because he basically had like half his guts ripped out. Remember, this is happening like several months after the events of the finale, so he's fully healed. Here he is in his captain's uniform with a shaved head and a hat, which I know is a little bit weird. This is going to be his costume for season 3, so to speak. Paul Blackthorne does look a little bit strange at first with a shaved head, but I totally dig it. The bright light they have him in framed here just pretty much tells you that he is riding high, like he's doing pretty good. He's essentially in a position of power now, and he can use the police force to help Team Arrow rather than hunt them down. Then WTF is this, Star City? I know a lot of you comic book fans will get excited about this. In the comics, Star City is the name of Oliver Queen's home. Starling City is just something that Arrow changed. It looks like part of Ray Palmer's plans for Queen Industries once he takes over is to rejuvenate Starling City in some way or rebrand it. It seems kind of strange, I know, but think of Starling City as an analog for Coast City in the comics. That one was destroyed during Reign of the Supermen. That was a long time ago. I can actually remember reading those comics. Hank Henshaw, the cyborg Superman, essentially wiped it off the face of the map. Eventually, with the help of Earth's superheroes and the Green Lantern Corps, the city was rebuilt and rebranded as the City Without Fear. That was also a big tie-in to the Sinestro Corps War, which was a Jeff Johns comic, so it was a whole big thing. I love how you can see Jeff Johns' fingerprints all over Arrow's storylines, but he's just written a lot of different superhero comics at DC, so you're going to bump into him pretty frequently. On Arrow, Ray Palmer is going to be like a tech giant, like a tech genius, so obviously whatever his plan is for Starling City, it's going to involve tech. This fandom-based heart attack is actually what happens during the Elicity date, or after it, in that first episode. So now you understand why Stephen Amell said their date goes horribly. She's obviously going to recover, but this is the event that shocks Oliver awake. He's kind of been coasting on his laurels since Slate got stuck in that Argus prison. And then we get that line. I know everyone's excited to hear him say it again. You have failed this city. We don't see who he's saying it to, but usually when he says it to someone, it's a person with deep connections to Starling, like deep roots in the city which I'm guessing is not Count Vertigo. So it might be Merlin he's talking to, but we don't know when he'll make his first season three appearance. John Barrowman is a cast regular, so he's gonna be in most of the episodes. I'm assuming he's gonna be in that first one. And then here's the icing on the cake, the Ra's al Ghul scene. It's just a teaser. The reason we don't see his face is because they haven't cast the role yet. 
Either they haven't found someone or they found someone and they just haven't announced who it is yet. I can't remember when I started making Ra's al Ghul predictions. I think we all expected him to be like a post credits teaser in the season two finale. So it's kind of disappointing we didn't see him then. But I feel like the show has been building to him for so long that it was just inevitable. So I feel like Arrow doing Ra's al Ghul isn't a huge surprise. The real surprise is them announcing it this early. Usually they try to save big stuff like this until the episodes air. Other than wanting to kill Merlin just out of spite, there are only a few reasons that he would bring himself to Starling. I'm going to say it probably has something to do with Waller's actions in the Hong Kong flashbacks and Count Vertigo in the present. All these new characters and all the new storylines have to connect by the finale, so I'm really interested to see how they connect the dots all the way from Oliver to Amanda Waller in Hong Kong to Count Vertigo to Katana all the way up to Ra's al Ghul in Merlin. Like they all have to intersect by that last episode. And that doesn't even cover the Flash crossover. I'm interested to see how they deal with the Flash characters overlapping with the new Arrow characters, or if it's just going to be like some special self-contained plot. It sounds like based on what they're saying, the two different parts of it, episode 8 on both shows respectively, will tie into the bigger arcs of each different show's season. Like the villains of Flash will overlap with the villains on Arrow, and it'll take both sets of superheroes coming together to stop them. Like a mini Justice League episode. That's just my opinion, they haven't teased anything about those episodes yet. But let me know, what are you most excited about after watching this trailer? I know everyone is freaking out about Ra's al Ghul, and it is going to be really awesome. But now let's talk about the Ted Grant Wildcat. J.R. Ramirez has been cast, and it looks like they're going full on with the boxing aspects of his character. In the comics, Ted Grant was a prize fighter that started wearing a costume and kicking bad guys' butts. He was a core member of the Justice Society, and as you can see here, some recommended reading for his backstory is Sensation Comics number 1, JSA Classified 8 and 9, and Batman Wildcat 1 through 3. Jeff Johns actually wrote the Justice Society comic about 10 years ago, so again, you see his influence. But I'll be doing a separate Wildcat video later this week. Be sure to subscribe to get it. Now let's announce the winner of my Arrow Comic Con giveaway. Congrats to Carl Caster. You win a green Arrow Funko Pop figure. I'll be messaging you on your channel for details, so be sure to check your email. I'll announce the winner of my Flash giveaway whenever I post a Flash video later this week. I'm doing a separate Flash video. Right now, you can click here to learn all about that first episode of Arrow Season 3 and click here for my review of the first episode of The Flash. I do a non-spoilery part at the beginning. It's amazing. You guys are going to love it. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys tomorrow. High fives.